Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and today is the day the launch of Modern Warfare 2 is going to be happening. Of course, some people are already playing the game early by setting their consoles to Japan or New Zealand or what have you. If you play on PC, unfortunately, you can't do that, but Infinity War did put out this tweet here saying, Launch PSA, if you're trying to change your console's region setting in order to access Modern Warfare 2 early, you will experience connectivity issues and may be locked out of the game until the official launch time of your region. That seems to be more just like marketing PR stuff like people are doing it it seems to be working just fine and yeah so the game's already out pretty much people are streaming it the embargo's up videos are starting to go live of course I'll be playing the game at midnight eastern time but I'm actually able to on my PC I'm pretty excited for it and as we get ready for another year of COD it's time once again to bring up skill based matchmaking right because you guys know I know we all know damn well as soon as everyone has their hands on this game the first thing people are going to be talking about is oh my god the skill based matchmaking it's so sweaty it's so terrible it's such a hard time look i get it man skill based matchmaking sucks believe me but there's an interesting little bit of news here that i wanted to cover as we get ready for the full launch of the game so mark rubin you guys may know this guy's name mark rubin was the executive producer at infinity ward from 2005 to 2015 which means he worked on call of duty 2 cod 4 modern warfare 2 the original one uh, modern warfare 3 as well as call of duty ghosts like the old school infinity Infinity Ward games, essentially, right? He's now the executive producer at Ubisoft, and he's working on the upcoming game X Defiant, which is making waves in the games industry because they have this very, like, contrasting stance against the idea of skill-based matchmaking within casual matches. As COD fans, that's something we've been talking about for a very long time, and Mark took to Twitter last night to post this giant wall of text right here, which I know is, like, way too much for you guys to read. So I'm going to read it to you because I think this is, like, a very clear message from a former con dev, like one of the higher ups at Infinity Ward, and I really think it applies to Call of Duty nowadays, and I think it should apply to games across the board going forward. So, cue the nice music, cue the crackling fire sounds as I just read this entire blog post to you. So, skill-based matchmaking has been a hot topic for a while and was trending on Twitter, so I wanted to take some time to write up my thoughts. One thing I'm not going to do is try to make this divisive. I'm not here to say that people who like skill-based matchmaking are wrong or that people who don't don't want skill-based matchmaking are right. This is just my point of view and maybe one shared by a portion of the community. So to be upfront and clear, I am not a fan of skill-based matchmaking and here is why. When you play a game with strict skill-based matchmaking, you are playing with and against a group of players that are for the most part just like you. They have a similar skill level and probably play in a similar way as you. And on paper, that sounds kind of fair. And you would be right if strict competition was your goal. And I am fine having that kind Kind of experience in a ranked mode where there is a goal and reward for playing competitively. But would you watch football if there were no standings, no playoffs, or Super Bowl? Ranked exists for a reason, to give players who want to push themselves competitively a place to do so and be rewarded for it. And when it comes to casual play, I don't think this is the right experience. So again, with strict skill-based matchmaking and even the new term engagement-based matchmaking, which just sounds like PR marketing smoke and mirrors to me, you are going to get an experience where every match feels the same. You will be playing against the same type of player and the same skill level of player over and over and over again. If you start to improve your skills, you'll probably get a few games where you feel a bit dominant, but don't worry, the algorithm will bring you back down to the same stale experience shortly. I'm in favor of removing skill-based matchmaking from casual play because I want players to have a varied experience. And no, it's not about pub stomping, it's about variety. The graph Graph of player skill is a bell curve, and so when matchmaking with no SVMM, and depending on where you are on that curve, most players are in the middle class because bell curve, you will mathematically on average have players in your lobby that are better than you and players that are worse than you. Now the people right smack in the middle will have 50% of the players being better than them and 50% of the players being worse than them on average, and if you are somewhere else on that curve, you will get the obvious, you can do the math, percent averages that match your position. But the key here is average. That doesn't mean every match will be the same. Some matches you will feel like you're getting stomped and some matches you will feel like you are doing the 
the stomping and you will be able to feel your improvements as the math of averages adjust to your new skill level. To me, the key to a great gaming experience is variety. I want to play against players better than me and I want to feel proud of being one of the better players in the match. And I feel that skill based matchmaking takes away that variety and makes me play the same match over and over again. So once again, that was coming in from Mark Rubin, the former executive producer at Infinity Ward. He was there for a decade. He worked on classic games like Call of Duty 4, the original Modern Warfare 2, as well as Modern Warfare 3. And I think he brings up a lot of great points here. These are things that we've been talking about in the community for years. Obviously, Call of Duty is very against the idea of getting rid of skill-based matchmaking because there needs to be a player onboarding experience. But even on Twitter, Mark Rubin's like debating with other people. Robert Bowling's agreeing with him, and he's debating with these other guys though that say we need to have a player onboarding experience if you're brand new to the game you know hypothetically if i got courtney to come play cod with me she would not have fun because she would not know how to use the controller she would not be very good and she would basically get stomped and if you have that really bad experience when you first start playing then of course you're probably not going to want to keep playing the game like if it's that bad at this day and age of course it you know back in the day we didn't hold hands but you know at this day and age if you have a bad on onboarding experience you're probably not going to play the game but Mark Rubin even says like even in their game X Defiant they're gonna have an onboarding experience where if you're brand new to the game there will be like some form of skill based matchmaking to help protect those brand new players do I need to bring up once again the exclusive ace clip where he was able to reverse boost or got into a counter or whatever and you see the people in this lobby clearly have no idea what they're doing they've never played a first person shooter let alone a Call of Duty game before they're just all just so oblivious as to what's happening, you know what I mean? Like, so, sure, there should be a protected bracket for people like that. You know, if, if a seven-year-old wants to pick up the game, which they probably shouldn't, it's an immature game, but regardless, you know, if a kid wants to pick up the game and they're brand new, you know, there should be some sort of onboarding experience. Not even just for COD, but virtually every video game out there. I understand that. But after that, once you get to the point where you are competent with the game, you get thrown into normal matchmaking, and again, you have that variety where there's going to be people better than you, and law of averages, there's also going to be people worse than you even if you're brand new to the series you're not going to be the worst player there you know that's just going to be how it goes and with team balancing and how team balancing works if you're brand new and you're awful they're going to put you on the same team as someone with a normal matchmaking system as someone who's like really good you know what i mean like if they I always talked about this back in like black ops 4 but let's say every single player in your lobby has a skill rating of like one to ten and you come in there and you have a skill rating of two, essentially. Obviously, this is all just imaginary and invisible. No one actually knows their skill rating. But let's say your skill rating is two, but in your lobby, there's a guy who has a skill rating of nine. Well, chances are they're going to put the skill rating nine player with that two player on the same team. So that averages out both teams. So they have roughly equal skill. That's how team balancing works. That's how it's worked in virtually every single video game out there. If you ever wonder why, like if you join a game and there's a bunch of really good players and a bunch of really bad players, they divide the good players up on separate teams typically of course there are some hiccups and some exceptions but typically they try to divide the lobby into even teams to make the matchmaking experience a bit better but the idea is the matchmaking that takes place before the team balancing is what's causing so many issues and going back to what mark said the idea of having more variety within your online experience would be fantastic it really does like he put it nail on the head man he put it perfectly how most matches kind of feel the same sure there's different people and maybe they're using a occasionally different weapons or different attachments but the play style is all there you know their names are irrelevant when it comes down to it because everyone plays virtually the same if you're in a very strict skill-based matchmaking bracket you know what i mean if you're somebody who just wants to chill out and enjoy the game but you're also above average you're the kind of person that's getting punished the most here if you talk about the idea of that bell curve right you have your worst players on the left you have your best players on the right and if you're like somewhere like close to the right but you're not quite one of the best players in the world you're in like skill-based matchmaking hell because because everyone in your game is really good. They know what they're doing. And that kind of person typically, and this is just my personal experience over the past 15 years, but that kind of person typically doesn't stray too far from the meta. That person is not going to be running around getting their knife kills. Like, I can't remember the last time I played a Call of Duty match and there was somebody on the other team doing knife challenges. It doesn't happen in my lobbies, man. Whereas back in the day, people did it for fun. God forbid people had fun playing the video game. 
game. <laughs> and as someone who likes to do challenges and progression and things like that, I'm going to be going for the Orion camo and all the things I can do within Modern Warfare 2. It's one of the things that kind of keeps me sane after playing COD for so long is being a completionist. You know, going for these challenges is ridiculously frustrating sometimes because of skill-based matchmaking. And not to mention all the issues that you have when you play in a party of your friends and you all have varying degrees of skill. So the lobbies just become completely terrible. Like, they'll match you in a super sweaty lobby and make you face another party of people but that party of people is better than your party of people and so you know one or two people on your team are trying to carry whereas everyone else is just trying their best to go positive and they can't because this is not their skill based matchmaking bracket and they're not used to this and it's a whole thing man it is it, it just it makes playing with friends worse it makes playing solo worse it makes going for challenges worse and it benefits the new players sure but there's ways around it like I said having that on boarding system where if you're brand new to the game you should have you know some sort of protected bracket especially if you're really bad you know like you basically can't walk in a straight line but after that there's nothing wrong with being bad at a game when the game is there to help you in a lot of different ways call of duty is not a strict skill based game you know what i mean there are so many you know overpowered loadouts overpowered weapons overpowered perks camping sentinel play styles there's ways around it and i can remember when i got in the cod you know, I was not very good. I had a negative KD in Call of Duty 4. I think at one point it was like a 0.5 KD. But eventually I kept on playing. I was watching YouTube videos because I enjoyed watching YouTube even all the way back then. And I got better and better and better. And I was like chasing that positive KD. I was like 30,000 kills in the hole. But I just, I wanted to have that positive KD. And quickly, well, not so quickly actually, I ended up becoming that person who was the guy calling in the airstrikes and the attack helicopters and things like that as compared to the person getting stomped by them you know what i mean like i could see that i was not that good and i was aware enough that i was not that good and i wanted to get better and i knew i could get better with enough play time and enough practice but we don't really have that nowadays because you basically just stay in the exact same skill level it's hard to improve when you only play people of an equal skill level which you may say that makes no sense where are you talking about that's the whole point of ranked mode yes for the better players, right? If you're a better player and you're only facing people of an equal skill level, if you get better, you suddenly pass those people and you move on to the next echelon. It's harder for the lower skill players because they may think they're gods at the game, but they're playing terribly because they are basically playing in the equivalent of like Pee Wee Baseball Call of Duty, you know, like they're out there facing people that can barely walk straight or aim their gun, you know, and so they go positive, they go 15 and 10 in a game of Team Deathmatch and they think, wow, I did really good right there. But in reality, they basically did that against the real life equivalent of recruit bots. And then they just stay in that exact same skill bracket because they never end up getting better at the game because they don't have to because they're basically playing recruit bots nonstop. And sometimes maybe they'll get a little bit better. Then they'll get thrown up into the next echelon of skill based matchmaking in casual playlists for crying out loud. They'll start getting stomped and get thrown back to the previous echelon. You know what I mean? And at that point, when you realize like the game is basically holding your hand and telling you that you're an awful player, like if they ever like become aware of that, they're probably going to be pretty pissed off. I don't know. But once again, going back to it, I just thought it was interesting. Mark Rubin putting out these uh, words here, and I thought it was a very interesting topic. This video probably isn't going to do too well, considering the fact that the game is actually out for a number of people. People are streaming it and making videos and things like that. But I have to wait till midnight. And so I'm excited to play the game. I got a bunch of my buddies ready to go and I will be playing the game all night and we'll hopefully have some fun videos for you guys tomorrow afternoon. But for right now, that's it for this video here today. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your thoughts and feedback down there in the comments, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.